1,000 runners turned out. Some real poker thoroughbreds stumbled out of the gates. But now, we're on the home stretch. The last jacket is our front runner, maybe where the smart money's at. I'd love to win every single event I play. It doesn't matter if it's a $10 home game with my friends or this main event. I'm always, you know, trying to win. While the final filly on the course is hoping to make a name for herself. Besides all the cash, the title would mean... <sighs> making history. It's time to find out who will fall at the final fence and who will kick on as we play down to the last eight. At the Pokestars.com, an adventure. PCA has drawn more than a thousand players to the sunny shores of Paradise Island for the 10K main event. Ten million dollars are up for grabs with a life-changing first prize of two million dollars. Last time at our feature table, it was the end of the line for EPT veteran Luca Pagani. This is something that I really don't like. <sighs> While Raz Jacker and Alex Fitzgerald continue to amass chips. Easy peasy. And Sweden's Martin Jakobsen rode the chip stack roller coaster. All in. Ending on a high. Now only 24 remain, and we will be playing down to our final eight. Faraz Jacket is the commanding chip leader. The unpredictable American has been in the top five since day two and hopes to continue his good run and not be too table. It's funny, I'd sit down at a new table and people would look at me like, oh, look at all those chips. The last lady standing, Juan Lu, has been on impressive form and stands a chance of becoming the first woman to ever make the PCA main event final table. Last time when I final table San Remo, I don't think I played my best. I was very nervous. But this time, I look at the trophy and I know what, that's what I want. Also on the outer tables is internet pro Carl Julius. Can he bring his online success to the live arena? For me to win it has made a ton to somehow become a millionaire from playing poker would be pretty neat. Starting the day second in chips is American pro Alex Fitzgerald. Could this be his time? To win an EPT would mean the world to me. So to actually have an opportunity to do it, that feels like a dream to begin with. So we start the day with three tables of eight, including our feature table on the main stage. Philippe's online handle is Take Chip, though if I were him, I probably would have gone for Take Chips. We mentioned Faraz's nickname being the Toilets because he has a reputation for always chasing flushes. Also at our feature table, New York stock trader John DeBella and David Bernstein, who is literally free rolling. He won his seat in an online contest that cost him nothing. Well, that's not bad. It's a pretty good ROI. <laughs> Lines 12 and 24,000 with a 3K ante. Action will be. David Granados folds the nine deuce. John De Bella. John's name is Italian. It means the Bella. We'll overlook that terror bad joke and see what he does with these pocket sevens. Classic tapes, almost not even a joke. He makes it 55,000. I don't mean to be rude, but is that beard real? It is real. That guy was clean shaven when this tournament started. Ace three of diamonds for Sam Greenwood. Looks like Sam Greenwood might be getting a little cute here. Have we been playing poker or climbing Mount Everest? He will three bet to 136,000. The Goldman will fold. Faraz Jacket is on the button with junk. I can tell you this much. Faraz isn't calling with that on the button. He's got Greenwood's attention. It's like letting the T-Rex know you saw him. You have to keep perfectly still. What is Faraz doing? I'll tell you what he's doing. It is on. Faraz Jaka, four bets to 320,000 with complete air. And there go two of Greenwood's outs into the muck. Both blinds, Bernstein and Detoy, fold. Back on Debella. If Debella only knew the hands he's up against. 
It's not my money, and I get to see all the whole cards, but this just looks like such an ob spot to squeeze, and Faraz is so live that I'd be pretty tempted to tell Faraz where to put his raise with a five bet. Dibella decides to muck, and Greenwood with the ace three. I wonder if there's a guy out there named Redwood who's got a green beard. Oh, right, poker. Greenwood went after Dibella thinking he was the spot, ended up becoming the spot himself. It's Greenwood's brother, Lucas Greenwood. <laughs> oh man, I love that. Greenwood reacting tongue in cheek, literally. If only we could put great minds like Faraz's on figuring out how to make cold fusion instead of cold four bets. You want to talk about that audacious bluff, get yourself on Twitter. Make sure you use the hashtag PCA. We've got Norlin on the outer tables. Alex Vanovsky with ace king. Ruben Vissa with queens. Vanovsky behind and at risk. Vanovsky's got a backdoor spade draw. Now needs an ace or a king on the river. It's a 10. We lose the last remaining British player from this year's PCA. Vanovsky is headed off ski. Ruben Visser chipping up nicely. Vanovsky will collect $52,000. Among the players remaining are several who've come close on the EPT. Martin Jakobsen has two second place finishes, the most recent in Dover last season. A few months later, Juan Lu came third in San Remo. And back in 2009, Anthony Gregg was the runner-up in the PCA main event, winning $1.7 million. Right now, he is fourth on the leaderboard, playing 2 million chips. The three biggest stacks belong to Philippe Dutoy, Alex Fitzgerald, and Faraz Jaka. Although Faraz has slipped a bit at the start of the day. Three tables left. It's showtime, right? It's the, the time that the professional players, the regular players, want to try to take some advantage of the amateurs. I believe that uh, the aggression is the, is the mother of the game now, right now. You have to be aggressive, but you have to keep, keep it in control, you know. You have to, to know how to be aggressive, you know. Uh, you have to get the time, the right time to do that. Uh, you, you cannot, like, uh, throw chips away every time. So if you keep the control, look for the best, the best opportunity in the table, Look for the, the the best blind that you're gonna you're gonna raise. Things like this are gonna make the difference to get the final table. Well, there's Alex Fitzgerald. He's gonna play a pot post flop against Carl Julius. And that flop is nine six deuce with two clubs. Those green chips are worth twenty five thousand each. Blues are 5,000, yellows are 1,000. So Julius makes a continuation bet of 67,000. Here comes a raise. Alex Fitzgerald makes it 155. Kyle has any sort of hand. He's not likely to fold this right away. Fitzgerald could be semi-bluffing any number of hands. He could also have a hand. Julius makes the call. We go to the turn, which is another club. Interesting card. Obviously, clubs came in, but open-ended on the flop came in also. Julius checks, Fitzgerald checks behind. Fourth club. Well, now you don't even need two clubs in your hand to make a flush. Oh, Julius will bet 255,000. A little more than half the pot. Not a huge bet if you've got the ace of clubs. Julius studying Fitzgerald as he goes for chips. He is raising to 855,000. There's a lot of things that could be going on here, but it's really hard to get cooler in this spot. Someone's bluffing and someone's got it. All in. Julius moves all in. It's looking pretty good that Kyle may have it, and his smallish river bet was meant to induce that last raise. Fitzgerald lets it go. Carl Julius wins a huge pot. Pretty impressive play from K. Julius either way. Meanwhile, we've just lost a player from the other outer table. David Peters knocked out by Ruben Visser. He ran into Visser's aces. You might think three Ks is overkill, but it turns out Ruben is the new chip leader. New boss. 
Looks like this is for us Jaka's worst day of the PCA so far. He just doubled up Lee Goldman, who's now been moved off our feature table. For us, down to two and a half million. Also, the blinds have really caught up with these guys. No one's really stacked all that deep. We're playing 2040 with a 5K ante. For us, has picked up Ace Queen here. Raz is clowning around so much with air, he's actually got a biggish hand. There's a pretty good chance he's going to get some action. Certainly from Philippe Dutoy, who's got pocket jacks. Got a three bet for Raz with a hand this good, and you're usually pretty happy to get it in pre flop. Dutoy will re raise. It's a three bet to 215,000. Gets rid of Debella in the small blind. And Corey Burbick in the big blind. Knowing his own image, this hand is pretty much the pre-flop nuts to Faraz. He could easily four-bat. He decides to call, and we go to the flop. Which is seven queen jack, top pair for Faraz, a set for the toy. Big time cooler. I think Philippe really should bet. Faraz is going to station you pretty often in case you're c-betting with air, and you can also build the pot so you can play for stacks on a later street. Faraz checks, Detoy makes it 175,000. Now Faraz likely has no idea Philippe is as strong and probably loves his hand, but that doesn't mean we'll necessarily see a raise. If Philippe were bluffing, he'd want Philippe to keep bluffing. Faraz makes the call. Go to the turn with nearly 900,000 in the pot, the four of diamonds. Pretty inconsequential card, except that Faraz is now drawing dead. Faraz checks a second time. Philippe should bet. He doesn't. He checks behind. River for free. Not sure I love the check. Makes it pretty hard to get your whole stack in on the river. Nine of clubs. Does complete a potential straight. I would say that check on the turn qualifies as a tarp attempt. Jucket checks a third time. Philippe going for value on the river, or trying to. He might get paid here. If he had bet the turn, he could have reasonably gotten the rest of his stack in here on the river. That's a very splashy bet of 600,000. How much was it? I bet this many. 600. I mean, could this guy look any more like he's trying to get money into the middle? Though Faraz likely can't fold top top. Cut. He makes the call. Raz isn't going to be happy about this, but I can honestly think he lost pretty close to the minimum. You can't go just folding top pair, top kicker when everyone thinks you're a nut job. Detoy adding a million to his stack. The Leafs probably feeling pretty good about himself, so nobody tell him what Faraz had and how he missed out on a whole street of value. If Faraz's hair looks wet, it's because he's been taking a bath. Thank you. He's donated almost two thirds of his stack today. Day five has been kind to Dutch pro Ruben Visser. He started the day with a 23 big blind stack, but after eliminating four players, he's now the tournament chip leader. 18 players remain, so still some way to go before we have our final eight. Well, let's pick up the action on one of our two outer tables. Byron Caveman open with a raise to 80,000. He's been three bet by Martin Jakobsen, who's pumped it up to 165K. Caverman shoves, and Martin Jakobsen snap calls, tabling aces. And the classic, I don't care about anything other than the fact that I'm turning over aces, turnover. Caverman way behind with sixes. You can say Caverman didn't need to go nuts with two sixes, but this is the poker world we live in. You win pre-flop and your race is enough to justify times like this. Caverman looking for a six. Kind of comforting having the sixes. Don't have to worry about getting sucked out on. Picked up a straight draw, could hit a five for the win as well. Six outs, but it's oh. a four on the river. Good game, and he's sent to the rail. Our 18th place finisher, collecting $52,000. And Martin Jakobsen now up to 2.6 million. Another all in on the other outer table. Daniel Schmieding with ace seven. Alex Fitzgerald has him dominated with ace 10. I guess you could say a seven is Schmieding's precious. 
Oh, things go from bad to worse. 7-4 would be better now, right? Good talk. Straight draw alert. Uh, maybe Gutty. Not a heart, not a heart, not a heart. An offsuit and I will make Schmeagel one gut shot to rule them all. But it's a queen. So Daniel Schmeeding finishes in 17th place. Alec Fitzgerald chips up. Daniel Schmeeding is speeding out of here. The jet skis are a calling. We're down to 16. We're down to our final two tables. And these are the eight biggest stacks. The biggest belongs to Ruben Visser playing 3.1 million. A whole bunch of guys playing around 2.8. Notice for us, Jacket is now in the bottom half of the leaderboard. Well, let's hear from a player who's been at this stage of an EPT before and knows what these players will be thinking. Strategy-wise, you know, they should be looking, you know, have good knowledge on the players. There's a couple of faces in the field now left. So they'd have to keep an eye on players who are going to be opening a lot and making a lot of moves. Should do their homework and make sure they know who are the most aggressive and the more passive players. Let's get straight back to the feature table because David Granados is oh. all in with Queen Second Jack on. and Anthony Gregg's reshoving with eights. Get out the Tremopolines, we're flipping. Granados behind and the player at risk. And that's Jasmine Moore, Tony Gregg's girlfriend. Granados getting into the best position to flip, standing. Let's see how he does. Well, the flop is more Greg than Granados. Stellar flop for two eights. Granados looking for a queen or a jack on the river. Let's at least make it paint. Gulp. Seven on the river seals Granados' fate. Again, good luck. Anthony Gregg played it perfectly. Welcome to the feature table, Mr. Gregg. And we say farewell to David Granados. He'll collect $58,000 for his 16th place finish. Meanwhile, on the outer table, Shuan Lu is facing a raise from Alex Fitzgerald. This is what's known in the industry as a three bat. She makes it 365,000. Fitzgerald doesn't look all that worried. I'm all he shoves. Quick call. Now he looks worried. He got it in with King 10. She called with Ace Queen. And they swing against Thank you, Schwab, but we had that covered. You want to tell everyone the percentages, too? Yes! She flops him dead! No drama. Alex Fitzgerald drawing dead on the flop. And the former tournament chip leader is gone in 15th place. More frustration for Alex Fitzgerald on the EPT. Let's hope he doesn't quit the tour again. OMG, look at all those chips! Xuan Lu adds another two million to her stack. The PCA is so great. It's nice to see friends at the same place. It's also a much tougher field. PCA has a lot of seasoned veterans in it, and it takes a lot of skill to be here. There's lots of females I look up to in poker. I used to be a cash game player, so Jennifer Harmon was definitely one of them. My main goes for 2012 is to simply advance my standings as um, one of the top female poker players in the world. Last time when I final tabled San Remo, a lot of players who don't know me may think I got lucky, which of course you have to get lucky to get so deep in tournaments, but this time I think it will be pretty apparent that I do have a skill edge as well. I didn't think any poker players looked up to Jennifer Harmon. Literally, she's like 4'11". The blinds are 25 and 50,000 with a 5,000 ante. And at our feature table, we're going to sweat with Faraz Jacka. Step inside his brain, Stapleton. I don't think Faraz is much of a sweater. Even with that giant mop, he wore a knit hat all day on day three. Didn't see a bead on him. We're only going to see Faraz's hole cards on this hand. And we're not likely to see him sweat now with a monster like this. The pocket queens, Faraz will raise. 
Makes it 115,000. Action folded around to John DeBella in the big blind. Well, he's thinking about something. Two fifty. He's three betting to two hundred and fifty thousand. Faraz knows no one ever expects him to have a hand this good. As I mentioned before, this might as well be aces for him. We should have no problem getting some more money in here. Great. He will four bet. You got a million behind? Um, there, a little more. Green stack? Like 1.1 1 .1 maybe, a little less. 395. Okay, cool. Interesting call. If he had something super strong, I would have expected that we'd maybe just see another bet go in. A low flop, all spades. Well, we've got no spades, so I don't love it, but still our hand's gonna be good so, 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 so often. Check. And usually when someone stares at the flop like that, it means they ain't got much. Oh, man. For us, shoves. No one sits there staring at top set. That's a ballsy move with absolutely nothing. Awesome read. Please call. Absolutely nothing. This hand is looking more and more like DeBella's got air, and he was out to get us from the start because oh. we're young, good-looking, and snazzy dressers. <laughs> All right, bro. DeBella lets it go. 8-5? Right. He folded a gut shot and a spade, so I guess that's good. Nice bluff. Well, technically a nice bluff would have been getting you to fold a hand. Not eight high, but we'll take it. But more importantly, we'll take the chips. He called a four bet out of position with eight high. Six. Meanwhile, an all in on the outer table. Is it wrong for me to want Nikolaus to go broke just so I don't have to say his last name? Yeah. We only have to say it once. Nikolaus Alafagianis is out yeah, in 13th well, place. Good game, Nikolaos. Uh, I'm kidding. Good game, Alaphagianis. Martin Jakobsen now playing 2.2 million. This young Swede has made such an impression on the European Poker Tour. Four final tables, including two second place finishes. He was the runner up in Villamora in season seven. He was the runner up in Deauville in season seven, losing to a Frenchman with a plastic round. Live career earnings of more than 2.6 million and a I have a big passion for food. I used to work as a chef in Stockholm. I don't miss the lifestyle of being a professional cook. But at the same time, it's a bit similar to being a poker player because the lifestyle of being a chef is basically a grind. My professional poker career basically started when I took third in Ipati Budapest in 08. And after that, I've taken second in EPT Villamora, second in EPT Deville, fourth in EPT Berlin, and I also final table a couple of side events. My experience will come well in play at this stage of the tournament since uh, I've been in this situation so many times, probably more than anyone is still in. Being a cook is just like being a poker player. Both involve pots. Good night, everybody. Well, at least he went out on a high. <laughs> Let's check in on chip leader Ruben Vissa playing a pot against Xuan Lu. She's going to bet that flop of King Deuce Deuce. Makes it 175,000. One of these players looks confident. One of these players looks defiant. Can you tell which one is which? Vissa makes the call, and the ace of hearts comes on the turn. Everyone says the ace is a good card to bluff at. Will this be a bluff, or does Xuan have an ace? I don't know. I can't see the cards either, dummy. 285,000 is the bet. This isn't going anywhere. He calls again. This is a big pot. Nearly 1.4 million in the middle. The six of spades on the river. Swan Lu. She's bet flop. She's bet turn. She's loading up to bet the river, and that's a lot of dimp. 910,000. It's a little less than three quarters of the pot. Vissa call. calls. And that was your classic ultrasonic Dutch screen. Translation, you rivered me, you bleep. Aces and sixes will win that huge pot. 
Can't help but smile after that, River. Just give it a few seconds before you tweet about it. Juan Lu is the new tournament chip leader. I think Ruben Vista just threw up a little bit. I think his head is literally figuratively spinning. For Juan Lu, it's all sunshine. setting here at the 2012 PCA, but the action is heating up at the tables. Braz Jacka started the day as chip leader, but after losing a huge pot to fully take chip to toy, the American has had to play the waiting game. At this point, I mean, there's definitely a lot of good players left, so the tables are going to get a little tougher and tougher, but I mean, I'm still comfortable and able to play my game. And four eliminations away from finding our final eight. You know, I couldn't help but notice there are a couple of players we didn't show during that montage of great players. Why is that? Time constraints. Seems reasonable. Blinds are now 40 and 80,000. Braz Jaka picks up queens under the gun and raises to 175k. Braz Jaka's picked up more ladies in a pink limousine. David Bernstein folds, but up to toy with ace nine in the cutoff. As per usual, he's about to get action with them. Toy reaching for raising chips. It's a three bet to 380,000. Goldman passes. Tony Gregg has eight in the small blind. Tony shoves it'll likely save Philippe some money. He's only got 20 bigs. All in. Well, he does move all in and he's picked a bad time. Mark Drove has folded the big blind. Back on for us. How much is it? If Faraz calls this and loses, he'd be left with not much more than 20 bigs himself. But still, I'm pretty surprised I'm still talking, and he hasn't put the money in yet. Tony's girlfriend has been joined on the rail by Christian Harder. Maybe Faraz is stalling to try to get Philippe to call behind. Obviously, his only two options are a five-bet all-in or a flat call to try to get a ton of action. Well, whatever happens, I think we'd be pretty sure that Philippe de Toy will muck the ace nine. Faraz. Alex to fold? <laughs> Faraz just took the old never trust the guy with two first names thing way too far. Greg got very lucky there. You just must think Greg is only doing that with hands that have him beat most of the time. Sometimes he'd be right, but not that often. To the outer table, Martin Jakobsen raised pre, Carl Julius and Daniel Schiff both called. Action is on Schiff. He checks. Jakobsen chooses not to continue. He checks behind. I forgot we're at the no laugh seats table. Carl Julius will bet 175,000. Just for a little perspective, that bet was for more than five times what these guys started the tournament with. Daniel Schiff. 350. He's counting up a check raise to 350,000. Jakobsen is done with the hand. Really tough to fold to a raise in this spot if you have any kind of hand at all. Julius will make the call. He does have the advantage of position. Queen on the turn. Top pair just sucked out and an eight just turned into a boat. It's check, check. Nine on the river. More than a million in the middle. 200. And Schiff. Bets half his stack, 200,000. All in. Julius shoves. Let me guess. He's got an eight. Julius looking very comfortable. Could he possibly have a queen? Still got 200 back. I mean, I've seen, I've seen people come back from less than that. Kyle trying to talk Schiff out of calling. I called whatever. Cool. I have ace-queen. Frustration call. Schiff was ahead on the flop, went behind on the turn. Run hot. The real trick is somehow getting your opponent to run just a bit colder. 
think this is just a case of a guy knowing he got sucked out on more than thinking he was ahead. So shift out at 12. Okay, what can I do? Stop holding him. I, hate, I, I hated that he raised the lead. I hated it, but I was just like, whatever. <laughs> Big Towers in front of Carl Julius. Here's the new tournament ship leader. This is his second cash on the EPT. Last season, he finished 180th at the PCA. His biggest live result, $66,000. But he's got online career earnings of more than a million. Being under the TV lights, honestly, it doesn't really bother me at all. I don't know, it's, when it comes to other people under the pressure, yeah, of course, you, you want to see who's going to be afraid to go out and bust and who's looking to get pay jumps. Especially as being chip leader, I'm going to want to be putting pressure on everybody. For me to win it, it would mean a ton to somehow become a millionaire from playing poker. It's, it would be pretty neat. You heard him. Becoming a millionaire would be pretty neat. Confirmation that he has the tournament chip lead, a stack of more than 6.5 million, which Ron Lou currently second on the leaderboard. For us, Chuck, it is sick. John Devella is the current short stack. So back to the feature table. Blind still 40-80. Action will be on Lee Goldman. And Goldman will look down at Deuce 4 and on Mucket. Pocket Kings for Anthony Gregg. Tony's now got the sword of hand. Faraz was putting him on before. A cheeky limp. He flat calls. Very, very sneaky. Philippe the toy has queens. Oh, Philippe, it's been nice knowing you. Welcome to Cold Deck City. Population, you. He will raise to 290,000. Well, we know Tony's not folding, but does he try to get it in now? Owen. Yes, he does. Philippe's barely got him covered. Oh. He calls. Another smaller silent scream. Tony showing down kings in this spot is going to make Faraz feel like an absolute genius for his laydown. Tony's girlfriend Jasmine quietly confident. Come on, ladies. The toy needs to see a queen. Really bad flop for Philippe. A two outer might not even win it for him if a club comes. He is dead to a queen on the river. Will Greg get the double up? Yes, he will, which means the toy, who's been a monster stack throughout the mid to late stages of the tournament, is down to 730k. So, uh, life. Please excuse Philippe's French. Tony Greg on course to make the PCA final table for the second time. And I like the tweet. He did the F face instead of the smiley face. Very classy emoticon work to the outer table where Carl Julius is open to 175k. Juanlu tried to click it back but accidentally under-raised. And then Ruben Visser, who's not had a good orbit, has shoved all in for 1.9 million. Decision back on Kyle. Oh, he's so stressed out. Huh? Are you thinking if that was a level? I mean, I don't think you have it, but I have the ball. I call. Yes, thank you. He folds, she calls. This is in great shape. We want the bodies to come check out this sick cooler. <laughs> yeah, <we're awesome. laughs> I'm sure it didn't come. Jeez, Kyle, does that line ever work? I have two times. No. <laughs> tens. No chance. I, I promise you I didn't. Oh my god, I can't breathe. No, you're I'm not, I'm not even lying. Julius claimed with a flop top set. Jack Queen. That wasn't even a wholehearted way of calling for cards. She's drawing dead on the turn, so Vissa will get the double up. <laughs> Thanks for trying. Always nice to be on the non-business end of a really sick cooler. Yeah, buddy. It's all skill. Sean Lou still playing more than four million. How many chips did she have? Ruben Vissa back up to more than four million. Back to our feature table where the blinds are up to 50 and 100,000 with a 10k ante, which means Philippe de Toy is now playing fewer than seven bigs. Grace. And that Grace. is a virtual all in. Yeah, he's left himself with two big blinds behind. I'm confused too, Lee Goldman. Tony Gregg. All in. Moves all in with King 10 of Diamonds. He's attempting to isolate. Let's hope no one wakes up with a bigger hand behind him. All in. Like Aces, you mean? Ah, yeah. Gulp. Uh, can I have 
Can I go see the price list before like doing something? I want to see like the prices. What what is the eleven place and? Pretty smart question to ask. Philippe's got almost no chips, but he could maybe ladder up by folding. Uh, I guess I'll call anyway. Is that a call? Okay. I call. It is. So a three-way all-in, a jacker way ahead. How do you yeah, but ace? like, why do you shove over? Just call it. They, they have like 20 big blinds each. No need, no need for strategy at the table. I don't see the point. Jaka does not want these guys talking strategy in front of the children. Not much for the toy on that flop. Greg catches a piece, but things are looking real good for Jaka. He's now a 73% favorite. Not bad three ways. Philippe is now drawing dead. Greg can still eliminate for us with a king or a 10. Anthony Greg's drawing thinner than Anthony Greg. We know the toy is gone in 11th. Will Faraz suffer a bad beat and go out in 10th? No. Okay, man. Good, good luck, guys. Good luck, man. Can we lose the toy? Good luck. Never recovered from that cooler. Good, good luck, guys. Good luck, man. Sorry, man. I don't know. Good luck. <laughs> Greg is crippled but survives. Uh, I mean, I still have chips. Oh, you have him covered? Yeah. I didn't get him covered, sorry. My strategy. Oh, you play, I know. Not tens, not queens. Yeah. Just waiting for aces. Old queens. Toys consolation prize, 85k. If Faraz had had Greg covered, Philippe likely should have folded as it stands. I think he made the right call. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Faraz didn't misspell ma'am. M-A-M is actually one of the more powerful, yet vengeful poker gods. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to pokerstars.com where there are qualifiers every day. in on the five players at the outer table. Blinds at 5,100. John DeBella will fold. Martin Jakobsen is a short stack. He shoves. He's volunteering to be one of those two players we need to lose. Schwan Lu reshoves. Let's hope she doesn't face the same fate as Anthony Craig. Ruben Lissa folds the big blind. And he folds an ace. Schwan Lu with Ace King. I have Ace King against Jack 10. Yeah, what she just said. <laughs> a 10 and a King on the flop. Jakobsen's yeah, got a piece. It's five outs. Needs a Jack or a 10 on the river to survive. He's had a few close calls on the EPT, yeah. and this will be another one who won't make the final table of the yeah. PCA. Uh. He's our 10th place finisher. Shwanglu's rail just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Can I go out there with them? Jakobsen is making a break for it. Yeah. yeah I, can, I can smell your drink from here. Where did he go? <laughs> Sorry. How many good good you game. You're like Paul Martin. Always the bridesmaid. And with Jakobsen's elimination, Ruben Visser is the last European player left standing. The final nine will now take seats around our main TV table. Carl Junius has the chip lead, but after eliminating Jakobsen, Juan Lu is third on the leaderboard with nearly six million. I usually make the final table, so I'm, I'm a bit disappointed now. I'm not really used to this. <laughs> it kind of sucks, to be honest. Yeah, guys who look like that aren't really used to disappointment. So after playing shorthanded for quite a while, the final nine have to get used to playing at a full table once again. Xuan Lu with ace eight under the gun. Welcome to the big kids table. A wise fold. Carl Julius will muck. Lee Goldman has ace ten. Brief consideration and then a fold. There's a guy who knows a thing or two about ICM. Mark Drover's out. All in. Tony Gregg will shove. 16 big blinds go across the line. He's got queen 10 off. 
David Bernstein has mucked. Ruben Visser folds the button for us. Jucker gives up the small blind. John Debella has nines in the big. Should be an easy call. Good call. He does call. Get your coin out. It's time to flip. Greg's a little worse than a flip because we know at least one ten was folded. Have fun. <laughs> Bella is the player at risk. Greg has him covered. John, what do you have? Are they pocket nines? We got, we got a root for you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Bella loses the race. Everyone else comes back tomorrow for the final table. Awesome flop for two nines. Tony Gregg will need a queen or a ten to eliminate John Bella. Bad flop. Yeah, that's it. No fun backdoors. <laughs> Well, that sort of brings a back door. A five will result in a chop pot. Everyone loves a chop pot. I'm sure he'd take it. John DeBella has to fade five cards. Steven does not take requests. Yes! Yes, baby! Yes. John DeBella's yes. nines hold. He will double up through Tony Gregg. Tony Gregg now guy. left with around six big blinds. Uh, I had like 1.6. Bella up for over two million. USA, baby. <laughs> Huge sums of money on the line. This is what they'll be playing for at the final table tomorrow. Remember, the winner will receive two million dollars. Lines up to 60 and 120,000. Action folded around the table to Juan Lu. King four of diamonds. This would be a little loose, but fairly standard at this stage, unopened in the cutoff. And then raised, 240. Carl Julius on the button. It's pocket eights. Two eights might be a little too strong to three bet in position. He will call. Lee Goldman. Yeah, nice, easy decision. Fold from the small blind. And Mark Drover gives up his big blind. Mark Drover folded, huh? So heads up to the flop. Top pair for Xuan Lu. Three over cards for Kyle's two eights. Xuan checks. Aiming for some pot control with such a lame kicker. Julius going for chips. And betting 250,000. Now, Xuan check calls, she will tip her hand a bit into floats and pairs, and she would probably have continued with big combo draws. She calls. Just over 1.2 million in the middle. The turn card is the jack of clubs. That card made a lot of hands, but with the way she played it, Kyle might know he can maybe get her off her hand now. She checks a second time. Kyle checks behind. Kyle may have just conceded this pot. Board pairs on the river. Shawan should be pretty confident she can bet this for value. And she does bet. 380,000. I really don't think there's any way Kyle can call this. If she didn't have a hand before, everything in the world just got there. No way eights are good. I love the way her railing crew is speculating on what her two cards might be. Carl Julius lets it go. And Juan is spot on. Very well played. Adding 750,000 chips to her stack. That's right, that's you on TV, buddy. She, Carl Julius, San Faraz Jacker, all playing more than six million now. By default, Jacker has reclaimed the chip lead. At the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got five short stacks, five players with fewer than 20 big blinds each. However, only one of those players won't make it to the final. John DeBella, first to speak, looks down, a pocket nines. Nines worked out pretty well for him last time. I know DeBella's superstitious. I hope he doesn't go too crazy with them. Work it out, buddy. Work it out. I'm just gonna go put the kettle on. James, I think he's got it. Come back. 250,000. on Juan Lu. Jack seven. OK, 
Okay, Lou, now you can work it out. <laughs> she folds, Kel Julius folds. Lee Goldman has kings. Lee Short, I assume it's all going in. He hasn't been all that active. Gotta wonder if John will factor this into his decision making at all when it's back on him. He does shove for nearly 1.1 million. Hold it around to David Bernstein on the button. Pocket fives. Another pair. Bernstein's pretty short as well, but I don't think he can be third in with a pair this low. Yeah, he mucks. And Ruben Vissas got tens. OMG. In Ruben's case, he's probably better off letting one of these two guys go broke or nearly broke and just laddering up. Fine. He will give it up. For us, fall to the big blind. It's back on Debella. Debella with the third worst hand we've seen. It was probably eight, eight, was that 840? I call. He makes the call. DeBella made a hasty call, but ultimately won the math would usually dictate anyways. However, now he's a four to one dog. <laughs> and the John DeBella fan club full silent. Goldman set for a double up. DeBella will be left with one million. Boy, he sure looks nervous about it. So far, so good. Goldman has the king of spades as backup. Fives would have flopped and open-ended. Yeah, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Jack on the turn. Goldman smiling now. Just one more card left to fade. Two outs for DeBella. Goldman set for the double up. But it's a nine! Yeah! 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 That's just terrible. And the nine hitting the river is pretty awful, too. Hard to act like you've been there before if you've never been there before. I understand the Bella's excited to make the final, but show some consideration for Paul Lee Goldman. Brother. Brother. Oh my god. Yes. Deal, I might have to kiss you in a minute. Please don't. We could plan with you, man. It sucks. Ah, oh, bubble boy. Handling it much better than I would be. Here's a fire alarm. So with Lee Goldman out in ninth, we have our final eight. Let's see who's coming back to play for the trophy, the title, and the $2 million first prize. And it'll be Faraz Jaka who comes into that final as chip leader. Juan Lu and Carl Julius, the other big stacks. David Bernstein, Mark Drover, and Tony Gregg come in as the short stacks. Well, next time it all comes down to one table as the last eight players vie for one of the biggest trophies in the game. Having held the lead for most of the tournament, Faraz Jaka is feeling confident. I love to play a lot of poker when I'm hot. The last woman standing has already made history. She's the first female player to make it to the PCA final table. The title might just be the, the most ambitious thing I could accomplish in my lifetime. It could be the biggest payday of these players' careers. Throwing the title of PCA champion, and we've got a massive